Hello, everybody. I'm Larry Ridley. This is Madden 18 on EA Sports. Two wide receivers will be looking to be number one targets on the field in today's game. It's Nelson's Packers going up against Bryant's Cowboys. With that, let's welcome in our fine broadcast team. Here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Thank you, Larry. EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to the Lone Star State and Mammoth AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas. A moment ago, here was the scene with the Cowboys emerging from their tunnel. It was loud. It's still loud. We're ready for football as the Cowboys get set to match up with the Green Bay Packers. And we say hi again, one and all. Brandon Gaughton here as we count you down to kick off. And I turn to my partner, that's Charles Davis. And Charles, I know even a former defensive back like you can admire some of the receivers in the game today. And Larry showed us a couple that are very likely to stand out in this one. Yeah, and it's hard for me to admit that I actually admire receivers. <laughs> but with their acrobatics, with their speed, with their moxie, and the way they go up and get the football, they can change the outcome of a game in an instant. Fielded about a yard deep. And all that worked, but he stopped where he ultimately would have been, and he simply taken a knee, and that's the 25-yard line. Out comes Green Bay, Aaron Rodgers, who amazingly was 0-4 career-wise in overtime games. 0-7 if you count the playoffs, but they did beat Cincinnati in overtime this past week. And he did it despite throwing the second career pick six for Aaron Rodgers. The first one since November of 2009. William Jackson the third got him and brought it all the way back. And for a while there, it looked like Cincinnati was going to get the win. But you and I both know, anyone who watches the NFL, when Aaron Rodgers is down, it's often when he's the most dangerous. He brought him all the way back. A first carry here for Ty Montgomery. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Give him a couple on the carry there. Second and eight. This is how the Packers will line it up on offense. Need to give a shout-out to wide receiver Jordy Nelson. Two touchdown catches last week against Cincy. Now 66 for his career. How about that? Moves it past Sterling Sharp into second place in Green Bay history. Behind only Don Hudson. The Alabama Antelopes, 99. That's a pretty good number to shoot for. And remember this, Jordy Nelson was questionable about even playing in the game. They said he was 50-50 going in due to an injury in the Atlanta game the previous week. Again, they'll go ground with Montgomery. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. And a nice carry there of 15 yards. I think many people thought Ty Montgomery would automatically go back to being a wide receiver this year. But it appears he's going to stay at running back. I know they drafted Jamal Williams from BYU, but... Montgomery proving his worth. And he proved it, yeah, proved it last year. 5.4 yards per carry, fourth best in the league. So the run gets him the first, and now they operate with a fresh set of downs. They go play action here on first down. He lost nine there. That's really going to set him back for second down. Rodgers to throw on second down. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. And now the defense for Dallas. Cowboys defense is characterized by its cohesiveness. When you look at them position by position, you're not often impressed. But when you play together collectively, as the Cowboys did in 2016, you find a defense that ranked number one against the run and were a tough team to solve for everyone who tried to move the ball against them. And some secondary help here for the defense in the nickel on third and long. Shotgun now for Rodgers. And he's going to find his man out of the backfield. That's complete. 
And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. Now on to kick it away, the rookie from Miami, Justin Vogel. As the first drive of the game stalls out, he's on to punt. So here are the Cowboys now, ready to go on offense for the first time. Their second-year QB leading them. It's the NFL's Offensive Rookie of the Year for 2017, Dak Prescott. For a fourth-round selection, Dak Prescott looked as comfortable as a rookie quarterback could look right from game one. And by the end of the year, accumulate a lot of statistics. But the biggest one, 13 wins, which tied him with Ben Roethlisberger for the most as a rookie starting quarterback. the first carry for Ezekiel Elliott and nothing doing he's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage officially no gain on the play and it's second down the offensive starters now for the Cowboys the trademark of the Cowboys offense is balance they start with the running game the number two running team in the NFL in 2016 and while the number 23 passing number may give some cause for alarm don't look at it that way. They run the ball so well and so effectively that when they do decide to throw the football, it often results in big plays downfield. Prescott now on second down. Drops it underneath to Elliott. And down he'll go at the 25. It's a gain of five on the play, and that'll make it third down. And a peek at the defense for the Packers. Green Bay's defense in 2016 was a bit unbalanced. Number eight against the run, but number 31 against the pass. So you know the offseason emphasis is on trying to make sure they shored up the secondary and increase the pass rush. So third and five, defensively expecting pass. They've got six DBs out there. the gun. Here's Prescott. And that is incomplete. And that's a great opening series defensively. You force what should be a three and out on your opening possession. And great coverage there on third down to force the incompletion to set up fourth. Now the seventh year man Chris Jones on to kick. Trevor Davis deep for Green Bay. Big boot that time, 57 yards the official distance. And it'll be Packer football here, first down and 10. The Green Bay offense now about ready to take possession here. And our game's hit a little bit of a lull here, a little bit of a snag, punts on back-to-back -back drives. And old school coaches don't necessarily mind that. Didn't turn it over, right? Didn't create a big play for the other team. Right now what you're looking for is can you gain an advantage in field position? And that's what both teams are seeking right now. Yeah, they'll be seeking to gain that advantage here on this drive. <laughs> on first down, Rodgers. And this one complete to Martellus Bennett. And he'll get this up to the 30-yard line. A nice pickup there of 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. Have you gotten used to seeing Martellus Bennett in number 80? I mean, he's been number 88 his entire career, right? And how about that, the fans selecting his jersey number? Yeah, that was his idea. He put that out there on social media and said, here, here are a few choices. What should I wear? And he went with what the fans picked. Over 100,000 people weighed in. Oh, 
Rodgers now on first down. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. You get a tight end like this, and you know he's used to dishing out punishment, but here, he's the one that has to absorb the contact, and as a result, unable to hold on to the football. So second and ten here. Rodgers throwing again. And he completes it to Jordan Nelson. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. I don't care who you put on him, he's going to be a handful in one-on-one -on -one throws. Yeah, right now, you're right. They're in man-to-man, -man, maybe need some safety help. I would say that'd be a good idea. Double-team him somehow. I'm going to have to make someone else beat me rather than let him shred my defense. They'll run it. Here's Montgomery. And he gets it down to the 48, enough for the first. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. And if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. First down. In the middle of the field, he's got Nelson. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. For Jordy last year, tremendous. NFL's comeback player of the year, 97 catches, over 1,200 yards, and led the NFL 14 receiving touchdowns. Well-deserving to be the comeback player of the year, but I know these types of competitors, they don't like to be the ones to come back from anything. They just want to be consistent, and Jordy Nelson is definitely that. So the offense has it first and 10. From the gun, it's Rodgers. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. Geronimo Allison, the target there. That'll bring up second down. A little too much oomph, too much mustard there on that pass. They yeah, really turned it loose, didn't they? Really cut loose with that one. Sharp, strong. Didn't lead to a completion, though. Made it very difficult. Second down here after the incomplete pass. Montgomery back to the ground. And that play is blown up. Losing yardage back at the 35. It's a loss of two. Now third down. Count me as a little bit surprised by what we just saw there because this has been a pretty long drive. And normally you think that wears down a defense. In this case, looked like the offensive line let them down a little bit. Yeah, allowed the penetration and the ability to stuff them for a loss. Seventh play of this drive coming up, but a long way to go on third down. Working from the gun, Rodgers. He's got his target, it's Cobb. And he is out of bounds, but not before taking this down to the A. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. A nice job there, Charles. They picked up the blitz, were able to complete the pass. That had the total feel of a quarterback in control. Red blitz, got him into the right protection scheme, so he doesn't get hit back there. He's got a chance to step up with supreme confidence and deliver it downfield for a nice completion. And the defense with their backs against the wall a little bit here as the offense is in the red zone. The offense operating inside the 10 at the 8 here. And a second effort gets him in. Touchdown, Packers. A great effort there. An 8-yard touchdown run. And the Packers have taken the early lead. And on his way to the end zone, shedding the tackle, he would not be denied. That's what's called finishing the run. Making sure you power your way through. One-on-one -on -one tackle. No running back wants to go to the bench and say, ah, I got stopped just short.
On is Mason Crosby for the point after. And it's good to make it 7-0 Packers. That time, a nine-play drive. And the capper that put it in the end zone, a run of eight yards. Crosby on now to kick it away. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. Now the Cowboys offense heads back onto the field. And the last drive, the first drive for them, not very good. Three and out. What do they go to here? Or you don't look down at your play sheet and say, this is what the problem is. Hey, let's find out who my playmakers are. Get the ball in their hands, and maybe the offense will move a little bit Sometimes better. Sometimes it's more important to get it to the right people rather than dialing up the right number. Exactly. Or the, the right play, yeah. That too. <laughs> Again, it's Elliott. Takes this to the 27. Give him four yards. We haven't seen much from him running the football here in this first quarter. No, you're right about that. We haven't seen much of him at all so far. They've stacked him up pretty well, but when you're trying to run the football, sometimes you've got to play the long game. Keep handing it to him, and some of those runs that aren't working now, they turn into six, seven, eight, and maybe more later on. On third down, it's Prescott. And that's caught by Beasley. A Dallas first down. Prescott hooking up with Beasley. The numbers for Dak as a rookie last year are still kind of mind-boggling. And you look at QB rating. Dak was 104.9. Now, among full-time quarterbacks, only two Super Bowl quarterbacks, Matt Ryan and Tom Brady, were higher. And look who he finished ahead of. Guys like Aaron Rodgers, Drew Brees, Russell Wilson. Amazing. Carry by Allian. And he will be brought down at about the 43 that time. A gain of three, second down. Not much happening there on first down. I thought there might have been a hole for a split second. Yeah, but it dried up pretty quickly, didn't it? Closed fast. if they stay on the ground for second down. From the shotgun, it's Prescott. And he hits Jason Witten, the tight end. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. I think defensively, you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that, and you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch, now you put the offense in a position where every series, they have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. Complete to Jason Witten. 
And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. So the big play nullified a legal forward pass. And maybe we know why they were able to get such a good chunk of yardage on that play. That pass was illegal. Out now comes the Cowboys punter. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. Oh, and what a play on special teams here. This is going to be down inside the five, all the way down at the two-yard line. Trotting out there, the Packers getting ready to go. Last time they were out here, they had the benefit of good field position, led to a touchdown. This time, they're going to have to work for it. They are, but with that last drive, that culminated touchdown, I think they carry that confidence into this one. It doesn't matter where you start with the football now, they have to feel great about their opportunity. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. And while they hope to continue this drive, it's really already mission accomplished. They've given enough space now that they have to pump the ball. They've done so with that first run. On second down, Montgomery. So a nice job to break the one tackle, but not much daylight after that as he's brought down. Call it a gain of five there on the run, but they'll remain a yard or two short here with third down coming up. Getting had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one. Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. On third down, they go Montgomery. And they're going to get the first down here as he's up to the 14. It's a gain of four there, and it gives him a new set of downs. I like the look that they just showed there. When you come out in a passing formation, spread things out a little bit, makes it really hard to cover the middle of the field, doesn't it? Because yeah. you got to go out to the perimeter and cover those guys. Yep, exactly. And got some good blocking, too. Helped him pick up the first. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Rodgers gives this to Jamal Williams, and he'll be taken down at the 18. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Looks like they're establishing a pretty good pattern here because they've been very heavy in the running game on the last four plays. Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth. So far, four plays in this drive, all four on the ground. Rodgers going to give this one to Montgomery. And now running right through it. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. 34 yards there and a first down. Well, plenty of credit has to go to the guy carrying the ball. He broke the tackle and gained the yardage. But that doesn't necessarily mean that the defender is bad. They're not going to make 100% of the tackles all the time. Even the best in the game will miss one occasionally. The key is not to let it snowball and miss tackle after tackle. On that play, credit to the offense, but that doesn't make the defense bad. The NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Second quarter about to get underway with the Packers in possession of the football. And they're on the move here. They've got it first and 10. Now Williams, 
And some room to work as he's got this down inside the 40 to the 39. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still, got to like the way they're moving the football, partner. Absolutely. Pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still, you'll take runs like that each and every time, won't you? Second down, Williams. And he's going to get this inside the 30. A nice pick up there, 10 yards, and it'll move the sticks. I hope we give enough respect to the big guys up front because they have been getting it done on this drive. The holes have been large, and they've been barreling through them, picking up first downs. down here's the run with Montgomery he'll get it to the 23 yard line it's a seven yard carry to set them up with a second and three and when you get good yardage like that on first down it really does a whole lot of good for your entire offense but I love the way he's finishing those runs at the end of things he's making sure he gets just a little bit extra Keep pounding here with Montgomery. And he is knocked down from the side. And he got half of what he needed there, two yards. And it'll bring up a third and two more. There are times when I think people just overlook how good a player Sean Lee really is. One of the more athletic linebackers in the league. He can make plays against the run, against the pass, you name it. He's one of the better ones out there. And number 50, so loved by the fans in Dallas. On third down, that's Montgomery. And he's going to have a first down here as he gets this one to the 17-yard line. But just four yards on the pickup, but that's good enough to extend the drive. Well, someone's been having a good game so far, and you know something? A lot of it's been power running. They decided to turn him loose again on third down, didn't they? They did indeed. He delivered the tough yards. Rodgers. This will be caught just inside the 10. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Seeing that play and understanding just how tough it is to cover tight ends, especially the ones running around the NFL nowadays, makes me glad I didn't make it in that league. I would have had a really difficult time. But now you get to sit up here with me. Yeah, and that's fun, isn't it? <laughs> and what a really nice game right there on first down for them. Brings up a nice second down for them. On second down, here's Rodgers. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. It's a lot of contact going on there. And in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. The Packers on third down. They've been near perfect. Four for five to this point. Here it's third and two. as they dump him behind the line of scrimmage. Losing four yards that time, and now it's fourth down. How about the fellas with the stars on the side of their helmets rising up on defense? We always hear about the Cowboys rushing offense. Their rush defense is pretty good as well, I think, because they're so cohesive. Defensive line linebackers really work well together. So now on fourth down, Rodgers will give way to Mason Crosby for the field goal try. And the 10-year vet knocks it through the goalposts, and the lead moves to 10-zip. 
So they started that drive from the shadows of their own end zone all the way back at the two, and they're able to get three out of it. And you know, shadows tend to scare people, right? Not in this case. This offense was not jumpy at all, handled it very well, put themselves into a position to score. After the made field goal, now Crosby will do the kickoff duties. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And he'll bring it a few past the 20 to the 23-yard line. The offense for the Cowboys now working their way back onto the field. And this is their third drive. Maybe the focus right now not so much on points, but getting their first first down. And when you start off a game, you don't even think that's an issue, do you? But you go a drive, a second drive, no first down, that becomes an issue. Now you got to think about, okay, what type of play calling do I have to do to get us in a spot to pick that first one up? the drive with Elliott and he got blown up on that play back at the 20 the loss of a full three yards and now it's second down well you had to punt on your first drive and on the first play of the second drive you end up going backwards I would dare say they need something good to happen right here right now Second down throw for Prescott. He finds his target, Terrence Williams. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. In so many ways, throwing the hitch route is actually one of the safer things an offense can do. Get the ball out to the receiver as fast as possible. Hope he's got man-to-man -man coverage and hope that his athleticism wins on the perimeter. Third and short yardage, Prescott. A dump off to Elliott. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. They get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. We always talk about having to read defenses and how complicated that is. Well, this was an excellent read read the pressure, and got rid of the football before it even got to him for a nice game. And when they're blitzing like that, running back usually a good spot to go with a football? Without a doubt, because he's right in your sight line or he's near you. So you're able to just get it to him easily. And once he gets in space, that's usually a good matchup for him. Now a play fake here on first down. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. Hey, you know, switching gears for a second, we were talking before the broadcast about the 0 3 teams who might have the best chance to turn their season around right now. You got the Bengals, Browns, Chargers, Giants, and uh, 49ers. Who do you think out of that group? I'm going to go with the New York Giants. They play in a very tough division, as we well know. But the way the offense came alive in the fourth quarter against Philadelphia, if that continues to ascend, they have an excellent defense. Supreme confidence because remember they went to the playoffs last season. Right. They think they can get back there with a quarterback who's done it at a big time level before and Eli Manning. So I would pick the Giants number one to turn things around. But I keep an eye on the San Francisco 49ers. To me that they're they are a team that's going to continue to improve throughout the year. The record at the end might not show it, but they're going to be awfully good down the road. They're looking for his tight end on the corner. It's complete. And he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35.
And now a first down following that long gain. On the counter, Elliott working his way for a gain of seven to the 26. Even though they gave up more than they wanted to on that play, it actually illustrates how well they bottled him up throughout the game because that was his longest run of this contest. of a hole there as he gets it down to about the 24-yard line. They got two of the three they needed there. It leaves them with third and just a yard. If they're going to get a first down out of this, they're going to have to earn it because there's been tough going in the interior there. And here we are on third and one. Be prepared. Brace yourself. Could be some contact going on. They'll look to make it three for three on third down conversions. They need a yard here. Now flags fly in, and one of the Cowboys looked like he got going a little early. They expect this from the visiting team when playing indoors, but not the home team. They're supposed to get all the advantages, right? The home crowd's supposed to help them. They forgot where they were, perhaps. The Cowboys on third down. They've been good. Three for four thus far. This will be third and six. Prescott from the gun. And this one complete to Witten over the middle. And he picks up the first down yardage as he takes it down to the 16. Dak fighting his tight end. Witten and the Cowboys have a first down. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on. Catching the ball and not much run after the catch. zone now. Prescott looking for his tight end, Witten, and it's intercepted. And it's ha-ha Clinton Dix with a pick. And he returns it here to his own 18-yard line. Brandon, this is why golfers do their best to never count a score in their head before the ball goes in the cup. This looked like a slam dunk for points on this drive, didn't it? Instead, they throw an interception and they're going to come away empty. Ty Montgomery and the offense getting set for their next drive. He's in a zone, second quarter, already closing in on a 100-yard game. And that's the magic number for a running back. Anytime you get to that triple digits, that's all you're looking for. But he's got a chance to really exceed that in this one. Yeah, he does. That, that's been the gold standard for a long time, hasn't it, that 100-yard mark? It really has, and that never has to shift because it's in a game. It's a 1,000-yard mark. I'm wondering, since we've gone from 12 to 14 to 16 games, maybe we need to up that a little. So after the INT, it's Rodgers. And caught. This is Bennett, the tight end. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense. So they'll take the yardage and tack on 15 more for the face mask. Talk about a play that absolutely costs you in the end. Just trying to do your job, right? Trying to get him on the ground. Next thing you know, they march off another 15 against your squad. Rodgers and over the middle to the tight end Bennett and he'll get it down here to the 43 a gain of six there on first 
Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pickup on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now brings up the second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. Second down. Caught on the right side by Adams. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. Rodgers finding Adams for a Packer first. I know Devontae Adams really developed in 2016 as a receiver for Green Bay. I think he had plenty of incentive because when Aaron Rodgers breaks contain, gets out of the pocket, anything can happen downfield. You can find yourself open, can't you? And it makes Adams a high-volume guy. Week 7 and 8 last year, 25 catches. Highest two-game total in the illustrious history of the Packers. <laughs> Throwing on first down is Rodgers. Caught left side, Bennett. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 20-yard line. A good pick up there, a 22. I know the halftime's approaching, but I don't think he's going to want to take a break. That's his fifth catch. Yeah, they've really been targeting the tight end. zone now. They'll look to throw. It gets it over the middle to come. And eventually brought down, but it's near the five at the six. Eleven more on that one and another first down. Some think the teams really won't throw a slant route unless you have a receiver that has a lot of stature to him. But sometimes the little guys, they get lost in there. People can't really locate them, and they run that quick cut on the slant, and oftentimes they can turn it into big plays. Two minutes to play here in the first half. We're back to Arlington right after this timeout. When halftime rolls around in just a bit, we'll send you to Orlando. You will hear the dulcet tones of Mr. Larry Ridley with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Does dulcet mean good? Yeah, it's just something that broadcasters say. It's got to be good, it's right? Be you good. tell me. Well, it's got to be good if Larry's doing it. Rodgers fighting him off and this is caught for the moment it's a touchdown but multiple flags down so let's sort this out illegal touching offense So reverse the celebration. We'll see if they have something else in their bag of tricks. And isn't that always tough to watch when they score and you see the excitement and then when they realize those points aren't going to count? Can they get it back together and find their way back to the end zone? to throw once more. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. Those throwing windows get a lot tighter near the end zone, don't they? And here's the thing. You already probably have three points in your hip pocket. You force a throw here and give up an interception, you come away with nothing. It's especially tough in the middle third of the field where he threw that one. And this offense on third down today, they've converted four times out of six. Not bad. They're looking at a third and goal here. Again, they'll throw with Rodgers. 
And this is going to be incomplete. I'm going to need some help with this one. How did he miss it? Wide open in the end zone. He's not hurried. He's not hit. And somehow, incomplete? Yeah. What happened? During film study, that's one where he's just going to shake his head, not be able to believe it. Six points go by the wayside on that one. And Crosby puts it through, and that'll push the lead up to 13 to nothing. So the drive takes him inside the 10, but it ends with just three. And a nice job defensively to rise up and make sure they didn't get in. After the main field goal, now Crosby will do the kickoff duties. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll take this up past the 20 and down at the 22-yard line. The Cowboys offense heading back out and ready to go again. And there are parts of their last drive they'd like to emulate. Of course, they'd like to forget the inning, the interception. But they did put together, Charles, a nice sustained drive to get him down the field. Yeah, and unfortunately for them, the only thing that matters is part two, right? Because once they threw the interception and finished off the drive, that does them no good to go back and say, well, you know, we had a good one going. Finish things off. That's the only way you can get it done. shake off the interception he'll look to throw and Beasley with it over the middle and he'll get to the 29 yard line brought down there a gain of six there on first second down Prescott and this one is incomplete the Cowboys all-time receptions leader Jason Witten the intended target and it's third and four some of the fans here don't seem too happy about what we've seen in this first half. No, not at all. And I understand why they look lethargic, out of sync, and it shows on the scoreboard. The Cowboys on third down. They've been near perfect. Four for five to this point. This is third and four. Out of the gun. Here's Prescott. And he comes back with one complete. And he's able to get it to the 33. Good enough for a first down. The gain of four that time as the drive continues. Here's Prescott. Completes it to Jason Witten. And now before this first down play, we're going to get a timeout here. As they'll stop it with a tick under a minute to go before half. And we are back here. I'm Brandon Gaughan alongside Charles Davis. So the offense takes the timeout. And now we're set to get going. Now the offense lining up first and ten. To the air again, Prescott. Wide open receiver complete. And now we won't see a play on first down. We're going to get a timeout instead as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. And we're back. The offense had a chance to talk things over. We'll see what they come up with here on this next play.
Prescott looks to throw on first. And this is caught by Witten, the tight end. And he's going to get this inside the 30. 11 more yards that go around, a first down as well. That throw has to be a quarterback's dream, doesn't it? Big tight end, curling in the middle of the field, so it's great sight lines for him. And when they show their numbers back to the quarterbacks, when they sit down right there, that should be pitch and catch. On first and 10, Prescott. And unable to connect on the long pass. It falls down incomplete. Des Bryant, the intended receiver. And that'll bring up second down. But not to get too overcritical there because he knows what he's doing, but his shoulders looked a little off kilter there when he threw that. I don't think you've been overly critical there. You're just analyzing it, and he gets those shoulders right. That pass will go from incomplete to complete. On second down, Prescott again. And that is incomplete. Down to 15 seconds now. Well, sometimes those cliches really come true, don't they? When they talk about it takes all 11 to play good defense, we've seen that in this ball game. I think the secondary has to be singled out, though. They are in the presence of every receiver whenever the ball's thrown, and this one, they help force another incompletion. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and 10. Prescott yet again. And he finds his man. That's Butler. And they'll burn the timeout with five seconds left. A chance to try to add three points before heading to the locker room. So the offensive unit called the T.O. And now we are ready to resume play. So even though it's first down, here's the field goal unit on now to try to get three before halftime. From the left half, should be a fairly easy one here. Still trailing, it's now 13 to three. So they're still down, but they are able to salvage three here heading into the lockers. This is what you work on from the beginning of training camp. Heading into the half, put some points on the board. No matter what the score says at that point, you've accomplished what you set out to do. To the field goal, Bailey will kick it away. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And not wanting to risk anything here late in the half, he'll just take a knee and they'll bring the football out to the 25. Time running down, they go down to a knee. We have hit halftime. Still two more quarters to go. We'll take a timeout. We'll be back after this. You're watching the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. It's in the game. All right, Brandon, back to you and Charles in a bit. But first, let's get you caught up on all the highlights from the first half. The Cowboys are behind right now, but the home crowd should give them a boost. The Packers will want to come out after the half and really put the pressure on from the start. All right, let's roll those highlights. 
midway through the first quarter. Williams is going to stay between the tackles, and he'd go in for the eight-yard touchdown as they get out to a 7-0 lead. First and 10, Prescott's throw under pressure leads to the turnover. Packers defense happy to get off the field. So that's it for us. We'll go back now to Arlington for the start of the second half. Okay, Larry, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. Out come the Cowboys now as he'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. They have the ball here for the inaugural drive of the second half. Pretty big deficit, though. We'll see what adjustments were made in that locker room. And I never want to make something more important than it actually is, right? I don't want to create more hype than what is there. But, but this is a do that? I'm doing it, though. <laughs> this is a really important drive. And we often talk about teams scripting plays to start a game. A lot of them script to start the second half, too. And they're scripting something that they expect to get them into the end zone and back into this game. <laughs> we'll see if that script is a good one for them. And this one caught by Des Bryant. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. And he goes for 18 there as the drive will continue. If you're going to blitz, likely going to leave you in man coverage with this guy, and that is less than ideal. It is because just about any offense that has an elite receiver, if you blitz and have him in man coverage, you're going to it even if he has an elite defender on him because he usually knows where the ball is before the defender does. So here we go, first and 10 now. Throwing, Prescott, quick hitter here, it's complete. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. 10 yards on the pickup there and it'll be second down. Completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. They play fake to Elliott. Now Prescott. And his throw here is incomplete. Cole Beasley, the intended target, and it's third down. I know our vantage point might be a little bit better way up here, but that looked like an ill-advised throw to me. I didn't see anything open, and this play just didn't look right from the beginning. It did not. I thought he might get outside and just chuck it away. Dangerous pass, incomplete. The offense on third down tonight, they've been excellent. Six for seven. They're looking at third and a few inches. They'll throw again. Prescott. The open man is Smith. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. The five yards on the play there as the drive will continue. And the big guy catches the ball in the backfield, and oftentimes it's quite a surprise to the guys playing defense because not ordinarily thought as a pass catcher, it often works when they decide to dial it up. play action here on first down. He's going to air one out. So they took a shot on first down, but couldn't connect. They may be snapping the ball near the goal line, but all you're thinking defensively, keep them out of the end zone. Force the incompletion, force them into going for three and not giving up six. So the incomplete pass brings up second down. Here we go, here we go. 
Elliott. And this has been a familiar sight all afternoon as they stop him behind the line. He lost two there, and it's third down. The evolution of Clay Matthews as a player, it's just one that they're going to end up writing books about. He didn't even start until his senior year at USC. He didn't start in high school. And now he's at all-pro level in the NFL. How about the play he just made there? Yeah, he has certainly made a name for himself. William Clay Matthews III. The Cowboys on third down. They've been outstanding. Seven first downs and eight tries. This is third down and 12. To throw is Prescott. He hits Beasley right side. And he'll get it down on the play to the 37. The completion good for only six, and that'll bring up fourth. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks. Don't let them get there. And they've rallied and made the tackle. And the Cowboys will call on Dan Bailey here. This from 54 yards away. And this is off target to the left. Didn't get there anyway. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. Everything looked good. Good snap, good hold. Sometimes, though, the ball just doesn't want to go where you want it. And this one winds up no good. Here's the Packers offense now getting set to start off this third quarter. They have the lead here. Well, we talk a lot about pregame speeches. What are halftime speeches like? For the most part, not nearly as emotional. They're a lot more clinical. Every now and then, though, they'll get after you if they think they need to light a fire. But in this case, let's go into the virtual locker room because here's what I think happened. They got in there and they said, listen, Let's take control right away. Yeah, Defense, we got the lead. Yeah. We've got the, de we got the, got the lead. Defense, don't give up any points. Turn the ball back over to the offense and let them go down and score and give us more of a cushion in the game. Check so far. Defense shut him down. Let's see if the offense gets done. He's going to hit his man out of the backfield. Complete. Just a one-yard pickup on the play, and it'll be second down. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. So second and nine, the defense looking to put them in a bad spot here. Let's it go for Nelson. So the long attempt falls innocently to the ground, and it brings up third. One of the toughest things about playing defensive back is pattern reading, trying to figure out what they're doing. And on that one, they had to fly, just sending a guy downfield with the in route accompanying it, what people call a dagger route, trying to hit the guy underneath after the clear out. In this case, though, they're not able to get it done. Yeah, they said forget the underneath route. They went for the guy on the fly, but... As you said, incomplete. Rodgers going to throw. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. That's a first down if he holds on, but you saw the contact. Able to jar it free from him and force a fourth down. Great play defensively there, as you said, just to knock it free, because if he had caught that, pass the sticks, first down. On now is the Packers punter, as he'll kick it away for the second time. Dallas gets set to take the field. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, get this a time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him.
They'll try and get the running game going with Elliott. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. No gain on the play there. Second down. No gain on that run, and while the team is down, there's still time to come back and win the football game. If I'm the offensive coordinator, though, I've got to think about moving at a faster pace and maybe opening things up a little bit and throwing it a little bit more. Second down, Elliott. And this has been a familiar sight all afternoon as they stop him behind the line. That'll be a loss of four yards on the play. And they're going to be staring at a third and long here. All right, Brandon, you know me as well as anyone. You know I don't usually advocate abandoning things during a game, but here we are in the second half. I think it's time to change things up. Let the running game go a little bit. Let's get to the passing game. And if you still want to get in the hands of the runner, maybe you swing it to him, throw it to him a little bit. Try it that way. for Prescott. And that is incomplete. But no second guessing the call here. It was third and long, so throwing the football was probably the smart play to try and pick it up. But they don't get it, and now the defense goes off the field feeling pretty good about themselves, gaining some momentum as they force them into a likely punting situation. Out now comes the Cowboys punter. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. Packers bring pressure and they block it. Now it's scooped up and this is a live football. And they will score. It's a Packer touchdown. Always important to get the first score of the second half. Now you start to pull away a little bit and get some breathing room going. And now we find out about the fortitude of the group that's behind because they were counting on getting into the game a little bit more, right? Maybe they get the first score. That doesn't happen. It looks almost insurmountable, but it's not. Let's see how hard they play the rest of the game. Extra point try now for Crosby. And that'll make this a three-score game as the lead moves to 17. Now after the touchdown, here's Crosby to kick it away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. And now here come the Cowboys. Start on the ground with Elliott. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. Ten yards there to start the drive and just enough by about the length of the football for a first down. At this stage of the game, the run pass numbers are a little bit out of whack because most of the yardage has come through the air. But in a sense, that just sets things up for big runs like that because the defense might be a little bit off balance. They pick up another first down with that run. So the run moves the chains, and here we go on first down. They keep on the ground with Elliott. 
And he'll push this forward only to about the 42-yard line. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. I'd say they've got to find a way to get him going. He's such a big part of their offense. I wonder if they might throw it a little and come back to the run. Anything, because you're right. He's pretty much been completely neutralized. Second down following the run. Prescott. It's caught on the right side. Williams. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. They give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. fake here on first down he's going to get this one out to his fullback and he'll be brought down it looks like right at the 40 six yards on the pickup and it'll make it a second down now that's often a surprise for the defensive guys when they see the big fella slide out of the backfield and catch the ball not something they usually go over in practice very often yards remaining now on second down. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he only manages a couple here down to about the 38-yard line. Well, that's all about doing the dirty work right there defensively. Second and short yardage, that's all about plugging those gaps, not giving the running back a crease to run through. And has a nice job to hold him just a couple and force a third down. The Cowboys on third down. They've been really good converting seven of their ten tries. This time they face a third and two. Here's Prescott. He's got his man. It's Williams. And he gets the first down here as he's taken down at the 24. A really nice pickup of 14 yards, and it moves the sticks. comes to the line now first and ten now Prescott oh he's got a man wide open complete and he is into the end zone for a Cowboy touchdown Jeff Swain a 24 yard touchdown and the Cowboys cut into that lead that's the score you felt they had to have here in the third quarter to get back in this game. And you know that there was an emphasis on their side. Hey, we know this. We know where we are. But sometimes that binds you up so much that you try too hard you don't get the score. A perfect combination of urgency, yet relaxed enough to get it done. Dan Bailey now for the extra point. It's up, it's good. That'll make the score line 20 to 10. So that drives seven plays in length, and it culminates in a Dallas touchdown. kick this one away. 
This is fielded a couple yards deep. And all that worked, but he stopped where he ultimately would have been had he simply taken a knee, and that's the 25-yard line. And now the Packers get set to go. Certainly want to avoid what they had to do last possession, and that was punt the football, because this, this game's starting to tighten up. In a basketball sense, you think about taking a little bit of the air out of the ball, right? Maybe milk some clock, limit the possessions. In this case, they might want to do the same thing, but control the game offensively, put together some first downs, put together a drive, and keep it away from them. Rodgers. It's complete to the tight end Bennett. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Give him 12 yards on that one. It earns him a fresh set of downs. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz game. And you can drop anyone out of your defensive front, defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. Hey, partner, let me take you league-wide for a second. Surprised right now that we only have two 3-0 teams remaining, Atlanta and Kansas City? After last week's games, yes, because a number of them came in with great momentum, and you thought that that would continue. I thought Tampa Bay would win at Minnesota and continue to be undefeated. You know, I thought that uh, Oakland yeah. had a great chance to be undefeated after playing at Washington. But this league, parity is the word, <laughs> and each and every week you better be ready to play. But with Atlanta and Kansas Kansas City, I thought Atlanta, they shook off the demons of that Super Bowl slump right there in the first game against Chicago when they won a close one, and they've elevated since then. And Kansas City, they continue to be red hot. The last couple of seasons, they've been hard to beat. The Packers on third down. They're at 50%, four for eight. This is third and ten. A play fake to Montgomery. Now Rodgers. And incomplete on the deep ball. And you just know when that play call came in, their eyes lit up because anytime you get a chance to take a big shot downfield, that's a lot of fun, and they missed an opportunity. On now is the Packers punter as he's on to kick it away. And a great job on special teams to down it as this will be marked out inside the five-yard line. Dak and the Cowboy offense heading back onto the field. And he had the touchdown on the last drive, also four for four. Very, very effective. What does he need to do to translate that forward into this drive? Not think that what he saw in coverages last time is exactly what he's going to get again. He's got to play ahead and start, and start thinking to himself, okay, we just did that. What are they going to take away now? What do we go to as a counter and continue to encourage his offensive line to continue to give him time? They were really good on the last drive. This is Elliott. <laughs> Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. I think they're ahead of schedule now after that run. They might be bold with this second down call after that type of a game.
Well, he does it at a high level, doesn't he? Because when I watch him, I think of his vision. Straight ahead, peripheral. Also has that sense of where holes are going to be before they actually open. I think that helps set him apart from many of the other bats in the league. So they pick up the first down after the run, and now they approach for the fresh set. Now Elliott, and he'll get about three as he takes this up near the 25. Well, so many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things, but the defensive guys, hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blows. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. They go back to Elliott. He's been busy. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. No gain on the play, and it's going to bring up a third down. And while there is no gain on that run, we do know coaches whose identity is rooted in taking it almost to the limit and then changing things up on you down the stretch. I think we're getting really close to that point in time, though, where the identity may have to go out the window, and they've got to go a little bit faster in order to try and win the game. Looking to throw, Prescott. On the left side, he finds Beasley. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. The completion good for only six, and that'll bring up fourth. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping him from a first down. Yeah, stopped him in his tracks. now in Arlington. It's the Cowboys in possession of the football, but they trail here as we begin the fourth quarter of play. Out now comes the Cowboys punter. Remember, though, he did have one blocked earlier. And this is away. It's a high kick, and he got all of it. And he didn't quite have the bank spin on that one. It hits at the four and continues into the end zone. It's a touchback. The Packers offense now. They get ready to head back onto the field. They've got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Ah, the leverage. big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer, create space for our runners, and let's go ahead and get these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Now a play fake. Rodgers. That's caught by Geronimo Allison. And they're going to get this one all the way out across the 45. A really good pickup of 28 yards. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. You can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. They find some open field here. Caught left side by Cobb. Touchdown, Packers. Randall Cobb, 52 yards. And the Packers add on to their lead. As a former DB, you might not like to see that, but from a wide receiver's perspective, those are the plays they dream of. Correct on both counts, <laughs> all right? Because once he took off, I mean, let's face it, that should have been done in big sky country. Aren't any speed <laughs> limits out there? And off he went. Glad I wasn't the one trying to chase him.
Now Crosby for the point after. And that'll make this a three-score game as the lead moves to 17. The quick strike ability certainly intact there. Two plays, 80 yards to score it. Crosby on now to kick it away. This will be taken in at the one. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. So out come the Cowboys now as their offense gets set to take over. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm. A lot of times the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. take this up near the 35 maybe the 34 give him nine on the carry that time and they're set up with a second and one well partner i know this type of running back i mean this size this intensity usually gets better as the game goes on and i just tell you from experience the first few quarters oh you're eager you come running up there i'm gonna tackle this guy by the fourth quarter you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. A second down throw for Prescott. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. Another wayward pass. You know, things started out poorly in this game, and to be frank, they just really haven't gotten much better. And all that does is emboldened a secondary. They feel good about what's going on, and they just play better and better. On third and one, here's Prescott. Complete to Jason Witten. And that time he's smothered as he's wrestled down. They got 18 yards out of that one, and it gets him a new set of downs. They brought in a heavy set on third down, and that usually means running play, but we have seen them throw out of that formation. And sure enough, they snuck the tight end out on that one, wound up hitting him for a first down. Fresh set of downs here. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. Prescott on first down. And he finds Beasley complete. And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 40. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Cole Beasley was a really reliable short-range target for Dak Prescott as a rookie. I really think those guys help out young quarterbacks right in their sight lines. Slot receivers, tight ends, and I think they had an excellent connection. Easily setting career highs, Beasley. 75 catches, 800 yards, both best in his career. Prescott yet again. And that'll be incomplete. We do have a penalty flag down, however. Let's see what that's about. So he was past the line of scrimmage when he threw it. And as they say, that's a no-no. Got to be able to understand where you are on the field and not cross the line before throwing the ball downfield. Oh, 
They'll need to get this to the 38. That's where the first down marker is here on third. To the air again, Prescott. And that's caught by Beasley. And he gets it to the 34. Good enough for the first. It's a 10-yard pickup, and it moves the chains. Slant route's effective no matter who's running the route and catching the ball. But when you have a receiver of that stature, you have to be a little bit more precise throwing it. You don't have the same catch radius with the bigger targets. So the offense has it first and 10. And again, it's Prescott. And Beasley with it over the middle. And he'll be a little shy of the 25 here at the 26-yard line. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. In today's football, where receivers break tackles, make people miss, <laughs> get upfield for the extra yardage, when you see a play like that where it's caught and he's dropped on the spot, that's a big-time play by the defense. Now flags fly in, and one of the Cowboys looked like he got going a little early. That's on the Pro Bowl guard from Notre Dame, Zach Martin. You can run the route tree as many times as you want, get in sync, practice it, do all those things. But once you get to game speed, it doesn't always time up quite that well. That one goes incomplete. Here's play number seven on the drive. This is third and seven. Out of the gun, here's Prescott. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. And he gets this down to the 18, good enough for a first down. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves his sticks. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. And the eighth play on this drive coming up. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he's eaten up at the line of scrimmage. Might have gotten a yard down to the 16. Not too many offenses want to turn down long drives, but when you're down what they are, they've got to pay it off with some points. Nine yards still remaining here to pick up the first on second down. So it looks like somebody may have forgotten the snap count and a five-yard penalty ensues. Offense. And that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. Sometimes the coverage is so good, no matter what you're doing on offense, you just can't shake anyone free. They try their best to find someone open, but they took away every passing alley, every angle, and shut the play down. And with a third and 14, we have six defensive backs out there now defensively. Now Prescott. And he 
couldn't hang on. Almost an interception there defensively. Instead, it brings up fourth. He's lucky to be getting that one back. After what they've done with him all day long with all the targets trying to go after him, he's obviously gotten smart, and his pride has kicked in. Made a terrific play. And the Cowboys will call on Dan Bailey here. This will be, let's see, 38 yards out. And Bailey able to knock it through. And that will close the gap down to 14. All right, so it's getting late in this one. Now, you could argue that they needed to get back within two scores, and they did indeed do that, but they still face a pretty uphill battle. Yeah, even with the field goal here, it's going to take two fourth-quarter touchdowns now to get back in it. And that's going to be a tall order against this defense. After the field goal, Bailey will kick it away. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. The Packers offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. Start on the ground with Montgomery. And he'll wind up with about six, up past the 30 to the 31. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run, got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. So up through three quarters, no reason to lighten up now. Second down, here's Rodgers. Throwing it a traffic there, and that's complete. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. They give him 10 yards on that one, and that'll earn him a fresh set of downs. Another nice pickup through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect him to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they consider safe. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Rodgers handing to Montgomery. And an alley to run. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Back-to-back -back nice plays. 12 yards that time and a first down. Do my eyes deceive me, or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? First seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season in order to continue to carry the ball at this rate. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. First down, they run again. Here's Montgomery. Solid running on the carry, but still brought down just inside of the 40. Eight yards on the pickup, and now they'll have some options on second and short. So the solid run on first, and I would imagine no real hurry to run that second down play. No, it's all in your quarterback now. He's going to keep an eye on the play clock and bleed things down, and he's not going to let the ball be snapped until it's inside three seconds left on the play clock. Unless, of course, you're playing a video game, you're trying to run it up on your friend. <laughs> nice touch. Cold-blooded, too. Now Rodgers throwing on second down. And he's going to drop this off to Williams. Complete. And he'll go down here at the 35-yard line. It's a gain of four there, and it gives him a new set of downs. 
everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware, a ball may come your way. And the offense lining up first and 10. They'll run it with Williams. And not much running room. Down to the 32. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Offensively with the lead, you want to run the ball, keep the clock going, but you also want to still kind of be in attack mode too, right? So how do you do that and not come back on your heels? Yeah, think about all the practices we've watched where they have that tempo period to go over things just like this, where they describe the scenario, tell you what they're looking for, and make sure that they're still attacking, yet at the same time not going so fast as to leave too much time on the clock. And they'll be inside the 25 now at the 24. It's an eight-yard pickup and leads to a new set of downs. How about this offensive line? They're really starting to establish themselves, take over this game. And before the series began, I know exactly what was said in the defensive huddle. Guys, we got to get no less than a three and out. Let's get off the field. Instead, they can't find any traction towards doing that. Right now, they're just getting muscled all over the field and getting pushed down it. Clock running under four to play now as they come up on first and ten. They'll run it now out of the gun. And not much. Maybe a yard down to the 23. They're a pretty good spot right now with a convincing lead. I think this is where they put on the boxing gloves, start to try and pound them into submission. And the offensive line, they've controlled this game. I don't see why that trend would change now. Now they'll throw with Rodgers. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And he'll take it down here just shy of the 15 at the 16-yard line. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. The Packers on third down, not quite 50%, four for nine. Here it's third and two. And they're going to take it all the way down and just take the delay. Delay of game, offense. So that'll back them up five. The Packers on third down, not quite 50%, four for nine. This is third and seven. Throwing now is Rodgers. Under pressure, and he'll go down. Back at the 26-yard line. Time for a break. We'll come back to wrap this one up after this. So it's Packer football here as we welcome you back. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. So now on fourth down, Rodgers will give way to Mason Crosby for the field goal try. This to make it a three-score game late. And Crosby puts it through, and that'll push the lead up to 17. And you figure with that, 
This game's pretty well out of reach. It would take a heck of a comeback at this point. Being three scores down, I think that's too much to ask with time winding down here in the fourth. After the made field goal, now Crosby will do the kickoff duties. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And a good effort on the return there. Gets him across the 30 to the 33-yard line. And now Dallas gets set to take the field. They're down big here late. I don't know. You just one last drive here for Pride. Some people like to do that. I remember playing for a guy once we were down huge, and someone said, Coach, what do you want to call? He just waved a hand like, who cares? Let's Make get out of here and do something <laughs> some other time. But some teams like to do something at the end to feel a little bit better yeah. as, they continue to, as they continue to move forward. Yeah, probably just want to put this one behind them. Prescott looks to throw on first. And he's got his favorite target yet again. It's complete. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. They pick up 12 on the play there, and they move the chains. Here's Prescott. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Well, we looked at each other right away. We knew that flag was coming out. And I always enjoy the conversation post because officials always tell you, I don't want to throw the flag, but you caused the play. You did it. I had to. So here we go. First and 10 now. Scott from the gun, looking middle, and it's incomplete. Bryce Butler, the intended receiver, and now it's second down. Unable to connect on the first down pass play, now it's second down. Prescott. They'll set up the screen to Elliott. And now maybe they want some extra time to talk about this third and long play as we'll get a timeout. As he'll talk it over here before what'll be an important third down. So we're back in the offense getting set following the call of that timeout. So a third and ten, and defensively, a dime look. Six DBs. From the shotgun, it's Prescott. He's got a man. It's Williams. And he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. And they convert on third with a gain of 22. Prescott now. And nearly picked off. Surprising to see a defender of his caliber let it get away. But it does get away, and it's second down. Well, he did almost everything right. Excellent coverage, breaks on the football, just unable to haul it in and take it the other way. So he dropped an interception. The key for him now, don't dwell on it. Just move on to the next play. So incomplete on first. Let's see what second down has in store. Oh, 
Now flags fly in, and one of the Cowboys looked like he got going a little early. False start offense. And that'll set him back five. second down and he comes back with one complete and he'll be a little shy of the 25 here at the 26 yard line eight yards on the completion but now they face third down on third down it's Prescott and he's caught on the sideline but he's not gonna have a first down they say he was out of bounds so a big call there that brings up fourth this defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. Now flags fly in, and one of the Cowboys looked like he got going a little early. So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter. Let's see how this plays out. try it here he's back to throw now a desperation throw deep downfield and they will not be able to hook up there it's incomplete they had to go for it with such little time remaining and that's going to be just about all she wrote for this one so they tried to go for it for pride but it really wouldn't have mattered this one it was already determined no doubt about it this one was over a while ago And Green Bay getting ready to go as they take the field. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them wanted to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that, that <laughs> weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive to end with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. Down to a knee here. The defense still with a couple of timeouts. We'll see if they want to use them. A road win in the National Football League. Charles, you never take that for granted no matter who you're playing, no matter where you're playing. You take it and you run with it. <laughs> and you know you primed the pump all week in your own home facility. No one thinks we can do this. Only people who believe are right here in this room. And then you go on the road, band together, and get it done. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gaughan. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. With that, we say so long from Big D.